question for you. Can you confidently say that you have tested your camera's limits? Because I can. First little trick, playing with the white balance. If you're struggling with grading, this technique might help you out a bit. My last short film was intentionally captured with quite a cold white balance, ranging from 2800 to 3800 Kelvin because I already knew the end result would be looking more towards the bluish colors with a cold atmosphere. It did help me out a bunch in post-production because I just needed to desaturate the colors a little bit, add some contrast and I was good to go. This method is certainly not for everyone and I would still recommend properly setting up white balance for your shots, however, if you really hate grading. Why not try something funky, you know? Here I was just walking around trying a colder white balance, a warmer, and I could still come up with great looks for each one of them. So yeah, just go experiment. Next is something most people unfortunately don't do nowadays, and that is experiment with profile pictures. Let me explain. Seriously, profile pictures is the most commonly used term in the world of Sony. Everyone wants to know your damn profile picture. Listen, the best way to understand which profile picture will suit you the most is by going out and testing all of them yourself. I shoot on PP8 S-Log2 with plus 30 saturation 95% of the time and when people start crying about S-Log2 only being 8-bit, we show them our cinematography reel and usually people instantly go silent. S-Log2 is way more powerful than most people think. You can pull out some really great colors if you invest the time into it. And where are the other 5% you ask? Well, for night scenes I use PP8 Cine4 and for photos PP off. That's it. I've been shooting in S-Log2 for almost three years now and I am so used to it that the workflow is getting easier day by day and I just love it. During first months of using S-Log2 I was really confused and would often mess up. However, when you're starting to get the hang of it, oh man, it becomes so much fun to use. After years of using it, you know the potential in it and it's freaking huge. Okay, the next on my list is color correction. Color correction and color grading are not the same thing. Come here, I'll show you some examples. Understanding color correction is very important and, well, in my opinion, it's the most valuable asset I've learned thus far. Color correction in super simple terms is adjusting white and black levels, exposure, contrast and white balance so that the image looks, well, kind of natural. Snow is white, sky is blue, greens are green, whites are white, some like that. Once you learn how to color correct your image, you'll also be able to create awesome grades for your footage. With enough practice, you'll be able to turn your S-Log flat ass looking footage into this good looking fella in less than a minute. Next topic on my list, masks. If you look behind me, there's a terrible, terrible situation. The highlights are blown out, the shadows are very rough. Anyway, I'm gonna be showing you how to increase your camera's dynamic range by using masks. Using masks will make your shots look so much better, especially when there's a scene like this. A lot of people are afraid of using masks, but check this out. Select a mask tool, click, 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 decrease exposure, you're done. It legit looks like we increased your camera's dynamic range in just a couple of minutes. Next is my favorite topic, exposure. Oh, by the way, pro tip, instead of trying to understand what you want in your frame, try to understand what you don't want in your frame. This one is simple. I usually try my best to expose the subject I want you to see. For example, in this shot, I want you to look at the ice flowing in the river. That is why I exposed for the highlights. If I were to expose for the river, well, the shot would look like this. Same goes for skies. I want you to see the clouds, not the trees, which no one cares about. Exposing your subject correctly will open up tons of opportunities in post, and getting nice grades out of your footage will be way smoother and easier. So a couple of weeks ago, I... Uh uploaded this video and uh, a lot of people were confused. They thought that I shot it on a film camera to get that diffusion in the clouds. I used some kind of a filter or anamorphic uh, lenses, but no, I didn't. I just I just played with Premiere's built-in effects. That's all I did. All you gotta do is just play around with effects. Don't be lazy, open up that effects tab in After Effects or Premiere and just play around with it. You can come up with so many different things. Have fun with it, you know? It's all about the subtle effects. And last, 
last but not least, be patient, my friend. Be patient. I've had the Sony Alpha 6500 for four years right now. Only after the third year, I really, really started to understand the ins and outs of this camera. For the first two years, it was like just experimenting, just understanding how to actually film with this camera. Just the very basics, you know? I really hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you here. If you have a camera, and if you've only had it for a couple of months, it's gonna take you years to truly understand your camera. There's many things I'm only finding now about my camera. Like only recently, around a year ago, I found out that there's a built-in S-Log to Rec. 709 LUT in the Sony Alpha 6500. It only applies in the camera. And your screen gets brighter so you can actually see what you're filming in 4K and 120 frames per second. Did you know about that fact? It takes years to understand how your camera truly works. What can I say? Thank you so much for watching and you know the drill. Peace out.